The Alpfront Trail, an 850 kilometer long relay run from Grotto at the Adriatic Sea to the Paso Stevio at the high Alpine mountains on the Swiss border. 10 athletes, all of them world-class trail runners, took on this challenge to dig deep and discover the history of the Alpine battlefield as part of World War I, a time where their grandfathers fought each other. Their trail led them through over 100-year-old trenches, caves, and cold bunkers, and touching emotional stories. This epic journey showed us once more that the European peace and brotherhood should not be taken for granted. Wie die das ausgehalten haben, als geistig, geben wir nicht den Kopf rein, aber. Ja. So. so it's the first day of the Alpfront Trail. We are here in Grado, we just came with the boat because uh, the first um, war action here were also by battleship. So we kind of wanted to do the same. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I made the, the lock, the lock button, <laughs> just in case. And uh, yes, so the first two runners will start now and super exciting. Between 1915 and 1917, the Italians and Austro-Hungarians fought many bloody battles in this area. Hundreds of thousands of men lost their lives in trenches dug into bare rock. Do you know how are the feelings at 4.30 in the morning? Yes! Yeah. Okay. okay! Let's go! Jacket on again. <laughs> I tried to be the superhero, but I yeah. don't want to shoot my pants. Perfect! Perfect! Super! Yeah. Yes. Do you want to go for another leg? Yeah. Uh, no, no! In case, just in case. The team is formed by the best trail runners of Italy, Austria, and Germany. Starting in the early morning, always two athletes run a part of the course, while the others follow in four camper vans, their homes for the whole adventure. Snow isn't unusual in mid-October on this altitude. And so the team had to face a real alpine challenge by running the last sections of day two. Yeah, today we started with really sunny weather. It was so perfect, really good conditions. And yeah, it was an amazing feeling to see the blue sky, the perfect tracks to run together. Despite all the other adversities the soldiers were suffering from, life in the mountains with limited shelter was demanding for mind and body. In fact, the winter of 1916 through 17 was one of the toughest ever in history. And in this area, the temperatures reached bitter cold down to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Hannes is always pushing. Ah, a little bit of snow in it, but uh, nice. While the runners faced a light crust of snow and already had problems moving, soldiers had to face heavy snowfalls up to two meters. Paths had to be cleaned by hand without machines or electricity, always in the fear of being attacked by the enemy. Over 40,000 soldiers were only killed by avalanches. The winter 1617 was the strangest winter überhaupt, den die Leute gekannt haben. Very old. Yeah. When arriving at the Pluchenpass, the team learned that here the Italian troops of Alpini tried to push northwards into Austria, but without success. Here oben da. Erstens einmal haben sich am Beginn des Krieges haben sich ja Freunde getroffen, ja. Man hat also müssen die Truppen austauschen, ja. dass hier endlich der Krieg in Schwung ja. kommt. Das ist ja fertig ja. Hirn verbrannt. Ja. In this area, the war didn't bring any gain of territory for either of the troops. 
just bloody losses on each side. Meanwhile, the runners continued their journey to the famous Italian Dolomites. So today we had a quite uh, easy and good day, I would say, um, because we have perfect weather and perfect views. Ci troviamo in Passo Falzarego, un luogo molto importante delle Dolomiti, perché era un luogo di incontro di vallate che hanno fatto la storia di queste nostre Dolomiti della Gazzuoi. Sono stati più morti per le slavine, per le valanghe, che per il fuoco dei canoni. La Weisse Tod, chiamavano i nostri, la morte bianca. Questi piccoli uomini allora hanno scavato gallerie fino a mille metri di galleria con 400 metri di dislivello per arrivare da dentro la montagna alle postazioni austriache. You can imagine the work. It's crazy. Almost at the Falsarego Pass. The soldiers of the two armies fought and lived here in the mountains until the 1st of November, 1917. After the bloody battle of Caporetto, the Italian army was defeated and had to abandon the front line on the Dolomites. <laughs> and Marco, we will start now easy, or you said? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, today's stage is from Paso Valles, where we started today in the morning, to Refugio Campo Mulo. Since May 1916, the Austro-Hungarian army tried to push southwards and in autumn 1917, they attacked the Italian positions on the high plateau of Asiago to move towards Padua and Venice. But the Italians destroyed their bridges and slowed the advance down with heavy artillery. The offensive ended in the three famous battles of Piave. The athletes arrived in Lucerne. People of this village still speak Cimbrian, which is a medieval German language and pretty rare. Ja, guten Tag, Volkentz Lucern. Ich grüße alle bin ganz herz. The team had planned their routes very carefully in advance, but had to modify it almost every day due weather, closed tracks, too much snow, and other unpredictable problems. On day six, heavy rain rolled in. The temperatures dropped rapidly, but that did not stop them from reaching the final destination, Garda. They could take a hot shower, change clothes eat really well, and warm up again. But how must the soldiers have felt 100 years ago? This is uh, uh, the, our seventh day on the Alpfront Trail. So Tom and me started now in Riva. Due to the heavy Whoa. snowfalls in the past days, they had to adapt the route slightly, but the team made it to Paso Tonale. There, the athletes found a monument in memoriam of the fallen soldiers and a reminder how cruel and useless war is. After seven days of running along the historic places, the legs were exhausted and the minds shocked from the dark stories they discovered. But feeling the team spirit and the privilege that nowadays we have the possibilities to share such strong experiences together with friends was just mind-blowing. What a privilege we have. Yeah, it's super cold, but well, I'm running with Danny, so I expect it will take like a minute. I'm gonna be super hot. <laughs> we are day eight of the Alphorn Dale, so it is the last day. Boom, we take. Uh, a stop at the little hut of Marcos Fara. Facevano le calze, i pantaloni, le scarpe, tutto bene ci sono le misure. And Jakob, our Austrian uh, athlete, is cooking a typical Kaiserschmarrn. And the journey ended as it had begun. Everyone pushed hard at the final kilometers up to Paso dello Stevio, where the former front line ended at the neutral Swiss territory and also marked the end of our trip. A little bit cold, but really fine. After the war, the historical Tyrol was divided, and the border between Austria and Italy was redrawn. East and North Tyrol remained as a part of Austria, while South Tyrol and Trentino became part of Italy. The aim of the Alpfront Trail run is to celebrate Europe's unity and freedom, and to observe the historical tragedy of division and rigid nationalism. 
By running this line of separation, the athletes seek to remind all of us of the importance of unity in Europe's shared cultural heritage. We take this for granted at our own peril.